We are checking it again with Quincy City Council President, Councillor Large Noel DeBona for an update on the March 20th City Council meeting. Hi, Noel. Good morning, Joe. Happy spring. The first full day, and it's going to feel like it, too. I know. It's great. The weather's starting to break, which is great. And, um, you know, it was actually a little cold on Sunday, but Saturday was a very nice day. And it looks like the weather's breaking and should get warmer today as the day progresses. And it looks like that for the rest of the week. You do the weather reports, right, Joe? <laughs> Pretty soon we'll be doing our chats uh, with you doing your morning walks around the parking lot. <laughs> yes, we're pretty close. We're pretty close. So uh meeting uh, last night, looks like you had a couple of public hearings before the full council meeting. Yeah, a couple of public hearings. There's one over on C Street that um, around 143, 150 C Street that they're looking to possibly just um, have a little more, um, you know, Bill Harris is the chair of that, and he he wanted to you know let uh, Councilor McCarthy in Ward One talk a little bit more about that one. So that one didn't 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 come up for a vote. So um, that'll be moved on to the next agenda meet, um, next next City Council meeting for a vote probably, just to make sure that everything's ducked to row. Um, so the one of the biggest items that came in last night was the Father Bills update. I want to thank CEO and President John Lansky to coming in la, um, you know last night speaking about. The progress at Father Bill's um, over on Broad Street. Um, it, it's, it's, it's a totally different uh, model that they're using, and they have actually going to have 30 units who are going to be permanent housing. Um, you know, a little bit longer term housing. Uh, folks um, don't have to be released to, to, the, to, the, to the city, um, and they'll be able to stay there, um, get acclimated for maybe, you know, one or two years, I guess the model would be. And then there's going to be a regular area of Father Bill's on one other section of the building. Uh, will allow, you know, different activities and stuff and stuff throughout the day. So it's, it's a good new model that's going to be coming in. Um, you know, they, it was a $23 million project. Uh, a million dollars came out of the Quincy Affordable Housing Trust, which was huge. I know a lot of people talk about affordable housing. Um, that was used towards that for the, for the permanent housing. And then a lot of it was done through different um, programs and grants. They've raised close to $10 million, that nine point. Eight million dollars they've had to raise, and they're about two hundred thousand dollars short. So, if anybody's out there looking to, um, you know, give donations, um, Father Bills is still looking for about two hundred thousand um, dollars left of the of the bill. So, um, I think it's a great new model. I've drive by it every day. Um, it's proposed to actually open in August. They're a little behind because of um, obviously COVID slash materials and stuff, but that's not a bad date to be coming in in August. Um, we get through the spring, obviously. We got through the winter. Um, that's huge for emergency shelter uh, folks out there, you know, trying to, um, you know, with the cold. Uh, obviously, um, I don't think we're going to have any more 32 degree days or, or really, really less in the 20s. So this is a good sign for Father Bill's, what the existing building is doing. Um, and then we'll move into, obviously, uh, August would be a great month to move into the regular new facility. Uh, I drive by it every day. I see the new siding coming up on the on the walls. Um, you know, it looks really, really nice. So I'm looking forward to it. I want to thank him and Pat Ronan for coming in. Pat, obviously, I think we all know him from, uh, used to be the reporter over at the Patriot Ledger for many years. Um, he's been over at Father Bills, I think, for now three years. So the team of those two were in the, in the council chambers just giving us an update and letting us know, um, you know, about what the building looks like. They did a nice PowerPoint. I know you guys over at QATV do our, um, council meeting. So if anybody wants to go on YouTube and, and you can take a quick look at um, the first uh, part of the meeting was was put into that. It's probably about an hour long and um, it's a great presentation. Is, are the talk at all, Noel, about the, the intersection improvement there with Broad Street? And yeah, I Army? actually brought that up quite a bit. And, um, Joe Shea from Granite uh, City Partners is also the engineer slash um, uh, field rep over there in that particular area. He's going to put more signage up there but we're going to also educate folks that they can use the, there's a side street now on field street, um, which is on the back end of Quirk. And a lot of the employees are going to use that, but we're going to, we're going to try to push people to go to, to that area and then go on the backside of Quirk. And there's a, there's a crosswalk obviously to get across where the Dunkin' Donuts is, um, you know, and uh, River Bay is right there to get across the street. It's just, we, we need to educate our folks um, to make sure they use the crosswalks. There's been a couple fatalities out there, obviously, with rain conditions, snow conditions, but just in general. So 
Um, I did talk to him about that and we're all going to work together collaboratively to, to, to make sure that folks know to use the crosswalks and just to be very careful. Also, you know, point is, is McDonald's right there on Southern Artery is being facelift right now. They're going to do it all over in reconstruction phase. That's not, it's been closed now for a few weeks. It's not going to be open till July. So that'll be coming in around the same exact time for that. So that whole entire section with the public safety headquarters, um, the police station, um, everything that's over there is going to be revitalized and, and new. So I'm looking forward to the progress. Obviously, we're going into spring right now, and we're looking forward to all the new additions in the city that will help folks. And, you know, we're going to he, he, he stressed we're looking to stop homelessness, not combat it, to stop it. So um, hopefully we can get to a better stage of, in, in here in Quincy, Massachusetts. Yeah, I know it's a whole new model that uh, they're looking at there, and it may be replicated, you know, across the state and maybe even the country. Who knows? Oh, it's a beautiful looking building. I've already in October I went out for my obviously my day job, and we visited the the the, the, the building, and it looks absolutely beautiful. It's going to be a great new model, and it's going to allow folks, and we have more education on the on the streets to to you know to not um, be walking out there, and and folks that need permanent housing will have a you know thirty units to be to be used. Absolutely. Yeah. And then, of course, the old shelter is coming down, right, to make way for the police old station. Old shelter's going to be coming down. So we, we just have to get to a phase where um, the new one's ready to go in, obviously, in August. And um, we've worked together with the city, obviously, the mayor and the administration to allow that building to still continue to go. It's in terrible, terrible condition, Joe. I've been over there over the last few years in general. It's just it's too tight of quarters. And obviously, we, when we were dealing with COVID three years ago, it's hard to to, you know, you're in a, you're in a, you're in a cramped space and, you know, obviously COVID is running rampant and, you, and you're trying to, you know, keep some distance, social distancing. It was a very difficult time. So we're looking forward to the new model and getting it open in August. Hopefully we'll be, we'll be open right there in August somewhere. That's great news. Look forward to the, to the ribbon cutting for that, for sure. Uh, what else? Um, you know, we had the COLA, which is the cost of living increase for the uh, retirees in the city. Um, it's, capped over at uh, 15,000. So if your pension is a little bit more than 15,000, it's up to $15,000, which is basically a 5% increase, which is $750. Over the last three years, it's been a 13,000, a 14,000 and 15. So uh, at the most, you can make 650 uh, two years ago, 700 and 750. So it really helped out the retirees. Obviously cost of living has gone up maybe eight, 9%. Some municipalities out there uh, for retirees and other things of cost of living have been just doing like 3%. 5% is a good sweet spot. So it was voted on and, um, it, you know, we're, we're going to put it into motion here. Um, chapter um, 269 of the acts of 2022. So we're looking forward to that um, to help out the retirees with the cost of living. The, um, the next item that was on there is a take a seeking a new citywide review of existing zoning codes. Um, office, obviously rezoning as well in the city. Um, this was brought on for Council Liang and, and myself, uh, Council Andronico, Divine, Harris, and McCarthy have gone on as co-sponsors to this resolution, a very important matter in the city, which is something that, you know, is the rezoning and existing zoning codes to look into. Um, what is residential A, what is res B, res C, all, all the business areas in the city. We need to take a quick new look at this and have a, a citywide um, um, rezoning of, of the city. What we're going to do in the next phase is obviously the city of Quincy is reconstructing all over the city. We want to make sure that we continue to protect our neighborhoods, um, our reses, um, you know, and it's pushing into, into our pockets of neighborhoods. Um, one of the biggest things that I brought up last night is we have a lot of commercial slash restaurants slash retail that have not succeeded. Um, they've had problems over the COVID and they had to, you know, they've obviously had to um, close. When you take a commercial property and you now take the entire commercial property and make it all residential, some people frown upon that and say, now it's just too many residentials in that particular area. We'd like to see more of a, um, you know, mixed use, uh, you know, some type of retail or some type of commercial base on the first floor. And then maybe some apartments or condominiums above. Some folks just don't want a straight, a straight residential. And that's what's happening across the city, which is becoming a, a hinder upon people just because uh, there's more people in a particular city or area. There's some areas of the city that are very blight. 
and they need to be revitalized. Um, you're, you're dealing with different times. You're dealing with different interest rates. So this is changing the models all over the place in the city. Um, but we need to take a hard look at it. I, I spoke about the zoning boards of appeal ZBA. I've been a counselor now in my eighth year and I've seen more people at ZBA than I have in the last year um, against certain projects in the city. So we, we need to almost sometimes get to the stage of maybe eliminating some of these projects or, or condensing them down in density. Um, and and, and the, the zonings, uh, these codes and the rezoning could help out in that matter. How will that review happen, Noel? Will, will, will... That is a very good question, Joe. We had a little deliberation up at the city council last night with Councilor Kane and Councilor Liang saying, Councilor Kane, this is great and this is nice to be putting in front of us, but is this really going to come to a fruition? Where are we going to start with this? Um, obviously, we have to go to the administration. Obviously, we have to go to the mayor. We have to go to the planning board, which is Jim Fatsy's. We have to figure out where we're going to go to actually go through all this throughout the city. I think the biggest avenue when Council McCarthy talked about this last night was starting with the wards, starting with the ward councilors and breaking down particular areas of their particular ward and saying, OK, we need to take a better look at this particular area uh, of this street in this particular ward, starting from the ward councilors first, sitting down with the six of them and going through what they think of areas where there are pockets in there that need to be rezoned, then going to planning, going to the different departments to figure out where we can rezone these uh, these particular areas. And then obviously coming back with a particular map, almost like the rezoning uh, that we did for the, um, the consensus. We had to rezone based on population, almost a very similar where we can get a map and then go case by case, you know, section by section. Um, we've done it in the URDP with the downtown areas where we had these exclusionary zones where uh, we were allowed certain building and happening. So. I think we need to take a real hard look at this, Joe. Um, we're coming to a situation where the city's growing, but we need to keep areas um, that keep in harmony and, and the aesthetics of neighborhoods. All right. Sounds like a long involved process for sure. There is. The last thing that was on there was a CVS pharmacy on Quincy Shore Drive. Council Harris brought in a resolution to say, listen, we got to do a better job. They're, they're not cleaning up there. They're not being a great neighbor to the neighborhood. There's a lot of fencing down. There's a lot of dumpsters and, and it's a lot of trash. Council McCarthy jumped on it and said Southern Artery is not in the greatest shape either. So we're going to take a hard look at maybe possibly allowing them, CVS, to come in. The higher ups, the, the field reps, the general managers, the corporation to come in front of us and talk about what they're going to do to be a good neighbor. So I'm very happy to support that for Council Harris and as well as Council McCarthy for the CVSs. Um, they're on Quincy Shore Drive on the end there, and then as well as Southern Artery. So okay. both those resolutions uh, passed? They passed them unanimously. Um, everybody was on board and as well as the COLA. So it looked, it looked good for last night. But a good deliberation, um, about two hour meeting. So a lot of stuff was spoke about last night, Joe. Very good meeting. I want to thank my counselors um, for coming, you know, for, for really coming to the table and really speaking about a lot of these matters, which are very important for the city. Okay, when's your next meeting? Next meeting, April 3rd, Joe. So put it down for April 3rd and April 24th. So we won't have a meeting for another three weeks after April 3rd. So those are our two meetings in April. As you know, as a um, city, we have to do two meetings a month. All right, and then okay. well, the committee meetings are on top of the regular city council meetings. So. Right. So, okay, so we'll catch up with you on the 4th, if that's okay. Catch up with you on the 4th, Joe. Hopefully the weather will really break. We'll be on the ground and doing some steps. Absolutely. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Noel. Thank you so much, Joe. Have a great day. You too.